Greetings friends and fellow cigar bonus guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and this is the video you've all been waiting for. I'm going to sound sample my entire cigar box guitar collection. I have over 30 cigar box guitars. And we're going to briefly, we're going to plug them all in, listen to them all, and I'll talk to them all real quick. I'll try, I'll try to keep this brief, but I do want to kind of show off my, my collection. I have a lot of really nice instruments. Uh, some of them are for sale. Some of them are, can't, are unplayable. They're just wall art. Um, the wall of fame and the wall of shame. So, I, um, so with no further ado, let's get this party started. We're going to start off with the world's smallest cigar box guitar. You guys remember these? CB Giddy used to hand these out. They're, they're kind of like business cards. They're just like wooden little mini cigar box guitars. These things were awesome, man. You can put them as keychains. You can make them as earrings, as necklaces. Um, give them away as gifts. Oops. Uh, yeah, so we need to bring those back, guys. We need to bring those back. Um, all the sound samples will be brought to you courtesy of the Vox Mini. And these are the settings. I do have it plugged in because um, the batteries died on this thing here. So I went ahead and plugged it into the adapter. And um, I will be, uh, the only thing I will be adjusting will be the volume control because some of these are louder and some of them are not loud enough. So I'll be having this set right here. We'll be playing all of these guys with a short leash here. Um, I will be using the same pick. Right here. Um, what else? Oh, I'm gonna try to do this all in one take. No edits, no trick photography, no smoke and mirrors. This is all just ad-libbing. So I don't even know if these guys are in tune, half of them I guarantee you are out of tune because we're next to the fireplace. And it gets hot, cold, hot, and cold, which is devastating for the strings. So, okay, let's see here. I think I have everything to get started here. I do have a little stool here that I'll put my foot on for some of these. Um, some of them that don't have straps or whatever. And then I'll also maybe sit down for some of these guys. So, first, right off the bat, four stringer. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. So I know you're going to ask, what are the strings? What are the tunings? And the answer to that is, I don't know. Every one of these does have a build video. This one here was built using um, uh, a box that was given to me. And the top of this is a 20, I'm sorry, a 100 plus year old piano top. Um, this is curly maple with um, a walnut fretboard gold appointments, everything's been sanded and stained and sanded. I do have some blue hue in here. Yeah, so this guitar is, it's one of my nice, nice ones here. It's one of my nice ones. guitar oh that was that wasn't even cranked that was all right but we got to move speedily through this gig and i'm going to set all the guitars down on this side so that i don't get confused and double up on one um, this one here i built a long time ago number 143 this was one of my first iterations of just intonation and um, yeah, you can see these funky frets here where we got multiple slots and what they call it micro frets here and there. And then of course I have the skinny frets and the mega fat frets. So this, this guitar, this one, I have several iterations of just. Of course there's the equal temperament, which is the normal. Then there's the, the just intonation and then there's the hybrid, which is just tempered, which is a split between equal tempered 
and just intonation. <laughs> Just intonation. Yummy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go way back in time. Um, gosh, 2013-14 time frame when somebody at my work at Intel came in and handed me this. This was a Cigar box guitar built by a gentleman named Fuzzy. And I did search him online, Fuzzy, and this is number 145. Well, somebody somebody handed me this. He says, dude, take it home, plug it into your amps, and tell me what you think. So I did. And ever since then, I've been a cigar box guitarist. So this guitar sounds so good. started building I was like man I want to duplicate this sound here and so it took me about 10 builds before I finally got to where I was happy with the sound at that point in time I reverse engineered this and I found out that there is a rod piezo underneath here so um, yeah the paints worn off you can actually see uh, up here those discolorations that is actually looks like it's scalloped even I don't know if you can see that or not Maybe you can see where it's scalped. And that's because I just was playing it like crazy. guitars this one right here okay next all right this one is a gift this one was a, I'm just no it's no particular order guys sorry just whatever's closest right this one here was a gift by Brian Davenport at the hot sauce cigar box guitar kitchen and this one here is a master work of genius engineering oh my gosh um, these are rollers from uh, screen doors the, tune, the strings come, this is, you can see it's headless, right? Um, H, H for hot sauce. There's so much, so much. Watch and pray. He's got the uh, slide. So, and this is like the top of a bottle, right? It's just screwed in there. And I think there are hot sauce bottles, whatever, hot rail pickup. Um, oh, guys, <laughs> look at those volume control knobs. And you got yells of the tuner but buttons are in here. So it takes a little while, man. You start reaching up here, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Come over here and then what was it left, right? Was it with this one here? It's a little confusing. If you don't play it all the time, then yeah, it's easy to get lost. Multiple choices for the strap, um, where you want to put it. Um, gosh, there's nothing that, there's nothing bad to say about this, this thing. Wait till you hear it. Wait till you hear this thing. Oh yeah. So I, I do the plug in here. It says here on the bottom. Now the reason why is because that way you can sit down and you don't have it. You know, monkeying with your leg. But if you're standing up, if you're standing up, it doesn't matter, right? I'll turn down just a little bit because it's 
clipping. Like I said, I'm keeping it all level. Um, I like I like this this uh, neck position. I'm about to... Such an awesome, awesome build. My gosh. Number, number 91. Watch and pray, my friends. Watch and pray. Okay, yeah, this one here. When I live in Portland, Oregon, uh, me and my wife, we would frequent these uh, antique shops. And I remember stumbling into this one here in a suburb of Portland called Forest Grove. It's on the west side of Portland, in between the ocean and Portland. And uh, yeah, I got this guy. And I left it all ratty-tatty. So this is not... Uh, the ratty-tattiness wasn't, wasn't necessarily from me. I mean, it kind of started off kind of ratty-tatty. A lot of interesting things about this hanger. The, the screws are gone at an, act, at an angle. Um, there's no real back angle, so to speak, on this guy. There may, may be a slight one here. Um, just a boring hinge. Look how he looped the strings through here. There is no fretboard on this guy. And it is dirty. And the reason why it's all dirty is because I remember one time I left this in my car with the windows rolled down and the rain got on it and just kind of caused everything to drool and melt all over the place. And I never went back and cleaned it because, uh, because I didn't want to. Okay, yeah, so, but this guitar is literally absolutely phenomenally dropped jaw. The tone of it is not really that good, um, but the playability of it is so inspiring, it's so addicting. Okay, so I tell myself in the future I want to go back and put a humbucker in this thing and just kind of. See, I want to turn down the. I know if I tune it up, it's gonna. Yes, yes, wait. Way too tinny. Yeah, we're better off unplugged on this guy. Because the sound acoustically.
Um, yeah, sounds horrible. Plugged in, unfortunately. Sounds so great acoustically and such an inspiring instrument. I need to upgrade this guy with a humbucker. Maybe a bridge position humbucker just so it screams. Okay, this is the one I just did a video recently where I copied Shane Spiel. He did a, a, a TikTok going, I built this guitar. Want to hear it? And then he just shreds and I'm like, oh dude, it's brutal, brutal playing. So I picked up my guitar and I tried to copy him, but there's like no way I can shred like that. Um, this one's tuned to A, so it's tuned up. So we got the, the, the G and the D strings on here. This one's cranked up to E, so that means the strings are, are A. The strings are really tight. Which would be good for slide, right? Because then you can, the higher the string um, tuning is, the more tension it is, the more stiffer it is. That means you can get really attacked with a slide. If the, string, if the strings are loose, tuned down, that is, they're not going to offer any resistance and the slides are just going to be banging against the fretboard. But you also get a different tone, a different tune, a different sound when you have higher strings, uh, especially the low strings tuned up. And that's what this is right now. <laughs> Just an Arturo Fuente box, number 409. But this thing was heavily distressed and stained and then distressed again. I scraped it with a, a charcoal briquette um, and then stained it again. And then I just I just had fun. Just, just And you can see all the scratch marks in there. This guitar was so fun to play. And every one of these corners is all different. They're all rusted. Uh, the patina, that's what you call. But even this guy's all rusted. Yeah. And then copper nails for the tops there. And I left a lot of the file marks in there and just kind of hit it with steel wool, mismatched tuners. Yeah, this, this guitar's cool. This guitar's cool. They're all cool. The uh, Salmon Bass. It's not really a bass, it's more like a baritone. Um, I had to put the switch up here. All the electronics are up here because this top had to slide in here. So this one here, this piece here, I don't know if you can see that or not, probably not, but uh, this whole thing slides in and out. Well, the only way for me to get, get it in there is to put the pickup here. So the pickup here is like way at the 12th fret. Here's the 12th fret. I mean, this is, uh, I don't know what the scale is, like 20, maybe 30, 30 inches. I'm guessing, I don't know, I should measure it. But, um, this one here, the, the pickup is near the middle of the string where it waves. So it really does render back to normal here on the, on the amp here. So back to, back to middle. Box. 
Number 429, yay. That was beautiful. Well, I cleared out this whole section. Okay, the next one is not playable. This one is my number one, the very first guitar I ever built. And it's basically coming apart. Multiple places here. Ooh, yeah, you can see that it's coming separated here. Um, I didn't even fret it all the way up here, and then all my frets are wonky here. Um... And everything's loose inside. So yeah. No. <laughs> Look at that nut. Yeah, it looks like it even might have cracked here. Tuner's mismatch. Alright, I'll I'll uh, I'll do my best to tune it up. you call unplayable but it is my number one it was given to a good friend of mine and he had deceased passed away went on to be with the lord so the family gave this back to me so now it's become a dear uh, cherished gift yeah look at the look at the gaps here so dude everybody has to start somewhere and uh it's okay to, to fail i guess because you learn right you learn i can go look back at this and you know, there's washers there to keep those strings from coming through here. A piece of all thread there. Um, you know, it could probably, we could probably tune it up and make it turn into a slider. Maybe take these frets out of here. I'm sure it could be redeemed. Right now, this nut's probably not in the right place. And that's probably why it's, it's wonky. But, um, and the neck's a little, not bad. The neck is not, you'd think for, for being so old, because this is probably one of my very first guys. But the neck would be wonky, but it's pretty straight. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyhow, it's wall art. Number one. Uh, here's my number two. Since we went from number one, might as well go to number two. Okay. This is the number. See, guys, I'm not lying to you. Number two. And no back angle. I did get these. Um, um, hook up wire they were come pre-wired pre with the tone I usually don't use tone controls because um, I always just keep them dimed with the volume uh, and you can see the wax is melting out of this pickup dude can you see the layer of dust yeah this is embarrassing look at that dust um, this is a one piece uh, no fretboard just a one piece with a little little kind of heel kind of carved right here, and I just I just went back here and cut it. Cut it. Oh, I remember this was a big block. Now I do remember that. Again, I went. I was always going with nuts back in the day. Now this little round thing, uh, the top here. What I did is I spray painted it, and then I got some glitter and just dropped the glitter on here. And um, it's the only guitar I ever did that like that. I painted this thing white and this thing white, and then dropped glitter on it. Um, I got pop rivets here, so this is... Now, this one here, the intonation is still still not exactly right. This is my number two attempt. Turn down the volume.
Uh, the reason why it's buzzing is because that nut, I mean, the neck is perfectly straight, but the nut is so low that the first fret buzz, buzzes. Um, oh yeah, and the volume control is up here. Uh, all four corners, or eight corners, have got the, um, yeah, this is my number two, guys. Everybody needs a number two. And here's number three. So by the time I built three cigar box guitars, I finally got the intonation right. Still using all thread here. Well, this is the first time I went to all thread actually. Okay, this is another one piece. And this one here was uh, stained and shellacked. It's turned yellow over the years, which is nice because it matches the yellow of the box. All thread. And again, I went with the same system, the tone and the volume. But as far as the intonation goes, This is the number three. Did I say number four or number three? Um, pretty box. Pretty box. And then again, oh, this one here I just did the four corners, not eight. But I rounded the back here, rounded the top there. So, and then also, these are also thinner necks, thinner profile. I was copying the fuzzy guitar here. And that's why I went with the, thin, the thinner necks there. That was number three. Here's number four. So number four, when number four happened, um, I was starting to get into the zone, the creative zone. Look at that headstock. Some car carvation going on there. Uh, this one actually started off as a four string. And you can see the, uh, the extra, the, all the holes here. But because this is so narrow here, those strings are really cramped. So I went back and modified it and turned it into a three string. Simple, just use the outside and then the, another one here and then just eliminate one of the tuners up here. So I got an extra tuner up here and not, this one's not, not even being used. It's an extra. This is number four, Partigas. An interesting story about this pickup here. One day I was just minding my own, minding my own business and the doorbell rang, ding dong. And uh, so I went and answered the door and it was a guy down the street. He goes, you're a guitar player, right? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. He goes, there's a guitar in this guy's dumpster down here. You want to come take a look at it? I was like, I was in it still in my pajamas. I was drinking my coffee. He's like, sure. <laughs> so I walked down there. Sure enough, man, there's this old beat up, uh, it was Ibanez guitar in this guy's trash. And look, look, look around. Like, it's in the trash. I guess I'll take it because it had parts on it and stuff. And so I brought it home. And uh, this pickup sounds amazing. So it's an Ibanez pickup. Listen, look, look at this here. There is this is a reverse back angle. See that here? That's that was a forward angle there. But listen to the tone of this thing. Okay, I got to turn this back up to to twelve o'clock. So we're back to normal on the settings on the amp here. Oh yeah.
Number quattro. When I built this guitar, I was so happy. I was so happy. It took me a while to get the pickups to work. Um, uh, it was short. It was short. I think I had a ground issue, and I put some screen mesh on here, painted the inside black. This is a solid box. I did do a fretboard on this guy, and I dark stained it, put nails in the top. Uh, the shellac on this thing, I shellacked it like crazy because it's still shiny after all these years. <sighs> Number four. Okay, now I'm just going to grab, this one here is literally one of my favorite, favorite, favorite um, cigar box guitars. It's so simple. Um, this, it's embarrassingly simple. Um, and there's some mistakes on this thing here. I'm just going to talk you, walk you through it. So number one, I found this, um, it's called a uh, hemp. The wood here is hemp wood, not hemp, hemlock, sorry, hemlock. And, um, it was at a, a yard sale in Portland, a bunch of fence posts, white picket fence. And I still have a couple laying around here. So I asked them, is that, is that wood for sale? And they looked at me and go, no, 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 no. So I was like, oh, darn it. Because it was like perfect neck width and it was like perfect length. Everything. It was absolutely perfect for, for necks. So I mind my own business, and then she comes and taps me on the shoulder. She goes, hey, did you, were you the one who was looking for the, the did you, you were interested in those white picket fences? I was like, absolutely. She goes, you can just take them. And I was like, oh, seriously, I'll, 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 I'll buy them if you want to name a price. She goes, no, 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 they, don't, they just want them gone. So I was like, are you sure? She goes, absolutely, take them. I was like, sweet. So yeah, so yeah. So anyhow, I built uh, several cigar box guitars using this one, using this wood here. And I left, the, that's why I left the white paint on here. So I left the white paint here and on the bottom. Um, when I glued these guys together, I didn't get them straight. And so you can see that, that it's not even, they're not even aligned here on the back side. They are up here on the front, but the glue must have slipped and it dried. And again, you know, um, who cares, right? I mean, this is, this is, this is imperfect. And there's like holes in there from when it was a, a fence post. Um, this is number 287. Now, I did go back, and um, I did a string change on it, and I forget what, what there was a problem in here. I forget what it was, but I wanted, and I know what it was. The box was pretty, and the neck was kind of rustic looking, so I wanted the box to get kind of downgraded. And so I just took a file and took off the edges and uh, took some Sharpie to the back. Just, just customized it. I did Sharpie around the sound holes. Uh, just to kind of give it some personality. I had a buddy of mine up in Oregon. He created these saddles on a CNC machine. And I got this, this hinge from Ace. Um, again, I go with the mismatched tuners. Why? Um, oh, yeah. And some of them don't even have tuning grommets in here. Okay, now this thing here, unplugged, um, has some distortion, some rasp. And that's because the top, there's no, there's nothing holding these guys down. So the top is actually just closed. And so it's very loose. Which kind of gives, adds to the, to the character, to the musicality. I don't know if you can hear that, but. Yeah, the voice of this. When I built this thing, I tuned it up. And started playing it and I was like, oh, like this ain't this is not for sale, dude. Sorry guys. in between here this nut and underneath here you can hear that so um i should tune it right yeah see when i do that and it wiggles plus then you can feel it when you when you hug it the vibrations just transfer yeah, so this guitar, this one's got magic, magical, magical. And then this is the Avo Evesian box. I've done several with these here. These boxes, guys, these, these Avo boxes, man, they are magical and musical. Build yourself a cigar box guitar with one of these Avo boxes. You won't regret it. 
Ah, the mystery bill, the mystery box. I was at a, I was up in Oregon doing some travels, visiting people. Okay, this is a, what this is out of tune, guys. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie to you guys. This is out of tune. Yeah. Let's see here. It's probably because the straps on the tuner. Okay, there's no frets on this guy. Um, I did reverse engineer this thing here because it was um, it was kind of rough. Put some new strings on it and uh, put some little side markers where the notes are. Deep breath. slide here. I'm gonna grab one of these medicine bottle slides. You guys remember these guys? These are cool. Uh, what to play guys, what to play. credit for this guy here because somebody else built it I just found it and kind of modified it um, made it se semi playable I mean this is not it's not the best but um, yeah look how high that action is there it's just a real simple build my gosh it does not get any simpler than this which means which means what anybody can build a cigar boss guitar And I don't mean that condescendingly. Uh, I mean that to encourage. Um, okay. A license plate. This one's just got a piezo. And I am tuned differently in here. The root is in the middle on this one here. I got the third in the high and then the five in the low. So the middle, the root is the middle string. This guitar does sound trashy and that's kind of the appeal in my, in my opinion. This is unplugged. simple construction I do have a back oh springs hello but yeah so um, you just build a frame put your favorite license plate on there <coughs> everything else is the same L P G license plate guitar three strings <coughs> pardon me Swaltz on all oh, the fire. You guys let me let the fire go out, man. Come on. Um, this one here I found in Guitar Center. And why did I buy it? Because because I'd never seen anything that was like store bought that had like the three string model. I led a sheltered life, guys. But this one here, the pick. It's so close, so that whenever you're playing it, you're constantly banging it. What 
a lovely sound. Let's see, my God. Lovely sound. Wish I could make one of my guitars sound like that. That would be awesome. Here's another AVO box. This one's stuck to the, stuck to the ceiling. Okay. Look at the details in this, guys. This box here is clean. Clean, clean. 456 clean back clean lines angles oh the only part that's not clean here is there where i've been getting my fat fingers on there what prop what happens is your fingers get black and then whatever you play gets black um, these dots here are actually inlays of wood and then wood solder burns on the top this is the curly maple with a scarf joint just pretty appointments but really the cool thing about this guy are these guys here, these sound hole covers. And if you know what those are, then you are officially old. If you don't know what those are, you're still a young guy. This one's a looker and a player. <clears throat> oh, yeah. What is next? Oh, reticle box. Okay, these guitars, the reticle boxes that I salvaged from the recycle bin at Intel. Got a bunch of these springs on the inside. Of course, the battery, battery for the uh, saddle. Again, these things are bullet proof. I say, guys, feel how sharp it is. It's a mousetrap. <laughs> there's something about a battery that does add to the tone. I ain't going to lie to you. There, this is a 25-inch scale. This one here looks to be uh, equal-tempered with a, a Home Depot fretboard and a big old sharp nail there. 
weapon. That's a piezo, guys. Listen to the sound of that thing. I'll turn it down just a little bit because I get a little bit of that top any. about that chord is you could you can move it around oh yeah so I did the signature you can hardly see it because it's black on black uh, number 425 a radical box um, okay I just finished this Recently, this is this is the uh, two-hour cigar box guitar build. Two hours it took to build this guy here. Uh, let me get me get a better grip here. boxes same thing solid solid perfect boxes for cigar box guitars need more cowbell this one here is number seven and I built this for my daughter. Oak neck, and again, back to the skinny profile neck and um, hand painted headstock. Back to the nut. This does have inlays here, which are just dowels that are painted to match the turquoise of here. It's embarrassing, guys, the layer of dust these things get. Look at that. It's embarrassing. been played in years. And going back up, so I'm about to 10 o'clock position now with the volume. So 
the intonation is pretty good. Um, pretty, pretty box, right? Pretty box. Pretty box. Pretty. But I like the gold. And, um, yeah. The rivets. It's a nice way to do it. Of course, they stick out the back here, so. Number seven. <clears throat> Do this one first. Since this this one's on the top, as far as the layering goes, this is my Christmas box. This one here had to be repaired uh, twice actually, because uh, the pickup actually came loose. It was a piezo. Uh, I got this box at Barnes and Noble. It's just it was just a box they had on display. I made the back and um, kind of built a neck. I, I like this here because the neck goes over. I really like this. I need to do this more. Um, this is really one of the only... I've made very few of them where the neck actually comes over. But... Oh, yeah. I did have to replace this because the, the original one was jacked. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. The um, inlays here are... I, did, I drilled holes and then colored the holes with color. And then filled in a nail inside there. So I have kind of... These are kind of unique... You got some, they got some bling. Zero fret here. This is number number 28. And um, I like it, dude. This one, this one turned out pretty. But I wanted a player. Volume up here on the top. That's why I took the extra time to make this one nice because I did. I wanted it to play. Get down to the wire, guys. This guitar here is was probably my favorite, not my favorite, my best neck. The taper on it is like perfect. The uh, level on it is perfect. The fretwork on it is was it was my best, and my gosh, I'm looking at it now, and it's like really good. I ain't gonna lie to you. Art Blankenship pickup. Call this the dream sickle because it's got that orangey dream sickle color. Piezo. But this pickup is what saved this guitar. I got um, pers what I would call personal sound holes coming up, and there is a, um, a spring inside of here also. And this is a 25 inch scale neck, so I'm. Um, the more I build, the smaller the scales that I'm building. Um, back back in the day, I used to build everything 25 inch. mistake in it and I, and I covered up the mistake with a sticker and the mistake was that the holes that I drilled in for the for the strings here were all wonky on the other side here it was embarrassing because they weren't in a straight line right there was all goofy here number 65 and so uh, so I just covered it up with a sticker 
So you never know, you would never know that it was all messed up until you, until you took that sticker and you're off and you're looking at it and going, what? This one here is a two stringer. Uh, while, we, while we were thrift, thrifting up in Oregon, I found this, uh, it looks like it's an oar, but it really is a menu for the Night Watch in, um, say Pasadena, Pasadena, California. Okay, you know how long ago this was here? Because uh, this, uh, what does it say here? Find, find something, Alaskan King Crab, Eight ninety ninety five. <laughs> Steak and lobster nine dollars and ninety five cents. Um, the wine list here's the wine list on the bass. A, gl a glass of wine seventy five cents. Man, number two forty eight. Look at this. The piezo just goes right to the jack right here. Pretty straightforward. Look at that cute little hinge there. So just two strings and a rope and no fret. So, and so you just tune it however you want. I don't even know what those notes are. I just know that they kind of sound good together. set these things down at. Um, this one here was a gift. Charlie St. John. I ain't gonna lie to you, dude. This freaking guitar is amazing. Amazing. I can just tell by holding it. I can just tell. And I'm copying Brent Garner of the Cigar Box Serenaders by putting the um, strap on the bottom here and kind of kind of makes it the guitar a little more prone to stay up here. Especially when you have a heavy neck. Um, there is a pickup underneath here. And a single coil here. So this is a humbucker and a single coil. Dude, that's a fat sound, dude. St. John's, dude. You did an amazing job, my friend. Wonderful gift. Awesome cigar box guitar. Another reticle box. This one here is the uh, transparent box. The transparent ones are kind of cool because you can like see through them as well. So we do have springs and 
Um, uh, when they're see-through like that, you can see all the wiring and all the soldering. That inspires you to do a good job and do neatness with all of your wires and stuff. This does have a single coil and a piezo here. Poplar uh, neck and fretboard. Just solid, solid guitar, dude, solid. Uh, and like I said, the, the tone of these things, uh, I, dude, I think they're amazing. That's the piezo. You know, he's still. This way you get the best of both worlds. You get the spring and the single coil. Just a little bit because this is loud. guitars ever made. Um, this is, oh, it's not even numbered. Ha ha. This guitar's not even numbered. Look at that. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. It's not even numbered. Look at the stripes in that poplar. The colors on there, uh, right up here. This is, this is all just poplar. Um, details on the scarf joint and the headstock, screw inlays, uh, Seymour Duncan pickup, the dice here, uh, the, the F-hole covers. It's not working. See more Duncan. It's not working. This is live, guys. Houston, we have a problem. Um, oh yeah, I didn't want to play something. Right. Uh, this guitar here. Oh, I can hear it. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's obviously a loose wire in there. Here's a cool little turnaround. a loose wire but it's a probably a good good reason why to go through all this stuff and figure out what's going on and fix stuff that's broke uh, last but not least another one that is not numbered this one here 
Uh, another four stringer. It's got my, I've had this guitar since the 90s. It's a Tom Anderson hand wound um, humbucker. I put it in the neck position. I've, I've been carrying this thing around for years and years and years. The sound of this, of this amp, of this, the sound of that pickup is amazing. See what we're tuned to? Look at these knobs. And that is Daphne blue, oak neck, fretboard, uh, poplar fretboard. Same color on the um, grommets there for the tuners. Um, the the tap taper on this neck is perfect. The fret, the fret work is nice. Double, double hinge here for the bottom. Hand carved saddle. This one here is what, what I used for the prototype for all those uh, CNC cuts. Catching all the strings here with the pick here and then I gotta figure out the tuning. Uh, but that's it guys that is uh the this is the last one right that, another four stringer so we started with a four stringer i think so and we ended with a four stringer all right so that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this video um some of these are for sale on my website the majority of them are not they're going to go back to their lonely uh quarantined isolation um prison cells over here Guys, we will see you in the next video. In the meantime, build yourself a cigar box guitar. And you can get all your parts at cbeginning.com. Rise blessings and cheers. We'll see you in the next video. Smile for the thumbnail.